uh, talk to us about negotiation. So you talked about uh, the importance of negotiation. Tell us, uh, you know, how, what differentiates you in terms of negotiation? Well, like I said, it's been somewhat of an obsession because I always feel outgunned. I didn't, I wasn't born rich and well-connected. I didn't hang around with rich people. I went to the golf course, but I was a caddy. So um, I've always been a little bit intimidated. So I've really had to work hard to level the playing field between myself and the people who I deal with, who until recently, until were way older than me and way richer than me. I mean, I've been doing this for, four, it'll be 45 years for me this May. So when I started out, you know, as 21 years old, everyone was, was way older than me. Now they're all younger than me, which I don't know when, I'm not sure when that exactly happened, but all of a sudden they woke up and noticed that, hey, they're not older than me anymore. They're all younger than me. But anyway, yeah, so negotiation is um, very, very important. I have three critical rules of negotiation that I like to follow. Number one is to build standing, standing. Another word for standing is preeminence. So you want to build your preeminence in the marketplace. And you do that through your personal promotion, <clears throat> through your writing, through you know, speaking. You can speak locally in your market about the market. The best, um, you know, the best, for example, the best way to meet gatekeepers in your market is to speak at a rotary club. Gatekeepers for wealthy people tend to be accountants, lawyers, CPAs, financial planners, and they all belong to rotary clubs. So if you can talk about <clears throat> your your market expertise, your market preparation expertise, your pricing expertise to, for example, a Rotary Club, you are talking to gatekeepers. And I'll get back to why that's important in a second. But building your standing in the marketplace is critically important. Number two is um, never assuming. There's a great book on negotiation called Getting to Yes. And uh, I love that book. It's my Bible for negotiation. And I loved it so much that I took a class with the author who has since passed away. He teaches negotiation at Harvard Law School. He actually negotiated the nuclear arms treaty that we just pulled away from with the Soviet Union. He was the, the United States, um, the chief negotiator for our side for the nuclear arms treaty. He was a really great negotiator. He wrote the book, Getting to Yes, Dr. Roger Fisher. And so I took a class with him at Harvard for one summer and I volunteered because uh, I was the first person to raise my hand I negotiated with him one-on-one -on -one in front of 200 lawyers from around the world for a week to get an autographed copy, first edition copy of his book. And during the course of that, aside from making a complete and abject, utter fool of myself in front of all these people for a week, I learned that we assume way too much. If I make one mistake over and over again, I try to make it less and less, but it's I assume I know what the other person wants. I assume they would want what I would want in a similar situation. And nothing can be further from the truth. Wealthy people are different than we are. And they have different, you know, we have people who are willing to sell their house for a million dollars less if the buyer's not going to tear it down, for example. We would assume, I would assume they'd want the highest price. I would want the highest price. But they don't, money's not always the most important thing to them. So number one, build standing. Number two, don't assume. Find out what they want. Ask them what they want. Don't assume what they want. And the third rule is the most important rule is actually a great rule for life. And that is detach from the outcome. And if you want a magic bullet for dealing with billionaires, it's being perceived as being willing to walk away, not needing the deal. Want, wanting the deal is fine. Needing the deal is bad. So being able to walk away. And sometimes I've walked away and um, they've called my bluff and I've lost a lot of money. But um, being seen as willing to walk away, being detached from the outcome is the number one rule uh, for negotiation. And that's the rule I'm the best at. And as I get older, I get better at it because I keep forgetting what the outcome is. So it's um, easy to detach when you forgot what it was. You know, I think that's something that I don't think that, that matters. Th those points that you said, I don't think that that matters what price point you're in. Those are just key, solid negotiation points that are there. Um, you bring up a great point. Yeah. You bring up a great point because you're right. This will work in any price range. I learned it dealing with millionaires and billionaires. But my, my whole philosophy for my whole career has been, I treat everyone like a million dollars regardless of their price point. And you're right. You can use these techniques in any price point. The, the, year, the month I had my biggest sale ever, um, which is just north of 19 million, which is a lot for here, not a lot for other places, but it's a lot for here. I also sold a house for 147,000 the same month. And guess what? 
that $147,000 sale had a greater impact on the life of that seller than did the $19 million sale because it was one of you know, tons of houses that she owned. But the $147,000 seller was able to pay for end of life care that she otherwise would not have been able to have. And it made the end of the rest of her short life, the months she had remaining, um, better for her. It was life-changing for her. But she, that's a great point. Thanks for bringing it up.